Hello Mavericks, and welcome to another great semester at Mercy College, and to our online course, Career and Life Planning. I'm your host, T.H. Culhane, a.k.a. your professor, a.k.a. your captain, and this is my wife, Inas, your T.A. Hi, my name is Inas, and I'll be your teaching assistant for this semester for Career and Lifestyle course. And if you don't understand anything from the professor, don't worry about him, just come to me. We will be taking you on a journey into the wild new frontier of jobs and careers in the age of the impending singularity. What does that mean, you ask? What is the singularity? And how will it affect, how is it affecting our ability to find and keep gainful employment? We will leave a full discussion of that for another module, but it would be helpful if you looked it up right after you watch this video and start learning about it and thinking about it, because if you haven't heard about it, what you might learn might shock you. Suffice it to say, that the 21st century job market bears very little similarity or resemblance to the one I entered when I graduated from Harvard College back in 1985, and it's changing constantly, with the rate of change accelerating at a dizzying speed. It's okay, though. Breathe. Relax. We'll get through it, and we will make it okay. But in many ways, it's going to take a completely different mindset than even your parents' generation had. And in some ways, surviving the next few decades is going to rely on a mindset our ancestors had, but that many of us have forgotten. A mindset for survival. And the key point is that we are going to survive, and we are going to adapt, and we predict most of us can and will flourish in the new economy that's dawning in the age of the singularity. So that's the good news. Is there any bad news? Not really. Not if you apply yourselves. Not if you're willing to expand your box and trust that you came to this earth with all the equipment necessary to do well in this exciting era of accelerating change. For you are homo sapiens, which in Latin means literally wise guys. You descend from a species of primate on the planet Earth that climbed out of obscurity from a few tiny isolated groups of vulnerable beings living in the jungles and savannas of tropical Africa that had neither sharp claws or teeth or extraordinary strength or protective shells or fur or thick hides, and a, a species that wasn't very fleet of foot or blessed with physical strength or endurance, and yet has gone on to build incredible civilizations all over the globe, even in the most inhospitable environments, Environments that no other living beings, with the exception of microbes, had ever survived in. And a being that has even left the planet itself to survive in the forbidding environments of outer space. You are a member of the first spacefaring organism in our solar system that we know of. And you're worried about finding a job? Don't sweat it. You got this. The purpose of our class is to show you how to approach jobs and careers in the space age and in the age of the singularity, and we will even be discussing why it may or may not make sense to even think of jobs at a time when automation is beginning to replace almost every function that human beings do without thinking creatively, and actually, many of those jobs that we do creatively. So where does that leave us? Well. In one sense, it is very hopeful. It frees us to be our best selves. We leave behind grunt work. We leave behind hard labor. We leave behind repetitive tasks. We finally get a chance to even abandon the idea of slavery. But at the same time, we have to be unusually creative and adaptive. Many people are scared of what they see as a diminishing job market and are scared about being replaced by machines. Some have reacted out of fear, supporting extreme xenophobic measures like closing borders and ending immigration or isolating their markets from globalization or avoiding technology altogether, measures that are all ultimately doomed to failure considering that it isn't really other people taking away our jobs and it isn't machines taking away our jobs, it's a wholesale transformation of the way labor is done and conceived. Others have been dropping out by spending most of their time lost in recreational entertainment and drugs, saying, stop the world, I want to get off. More and more people seem to be abandoning ship or bailing out of the world as we know it. Some of this is a natural reaction to a perception of hopelessness 
that is actually, I guess, somewhat healthy in the long run as people begin to question and then turn their backs on the very system itself. But the system is changing. And the question is, what are the alternatives? And if you jump off now, do you know where you're going to land? And are you going to land safely? Do you, in a sense, have a parachute? In this course, we address all those feelings and issues, and we hope to provide each other with the parachutes that make landing in the new frontier not just safe, but actually joyful. We believe so much that we all can land safely in the brave new world of 21st century careers that we celebrate all the different paths that each of us will take to get our feet back on the ground, and we use this excellent practical manual for job hunters and career changers as our primary text for this class. It's called, What Color Is Your Parachute? And it is the best-selling job hunting book in the world. Far from teaching you a single certain strategy for navigating safely through this century's tumultuous seas of job uncertainty, it celebrates a diversity of approaches, a plethora of multicolored, multicultural, multifaceted ways of going about adapting to change and not just surviving, but thriving in the evolving job market as we approach the singularity. So here's your first assignment. Get the book. Start reading it and pay particular attention to the messages of chapter one, which is called, It's a Whole New World for Job Hunters, and chapter two, Google is your new resume. Remember when I said earlier, if you're willing to expand your box, you won't have much trouble? Note that we didn't say, if you're willing to think outside the box. You've heard that a lot, but that turned out to be pretty bad advice, at least in my opinion and experience. See, when you think outside the box, you gain new insights, but you often forget the old ones. You often forget all the wisdom that was already inside the box. And then you might find yourself stuck in yet another box whose outside is ironically the inside of the box you left behind. Instead, we say, expand your box. Then you have everything you already knew from inside your box and can now add to it all the new things you discover outside your box. Ultimately, you can then keep expanding and expanding until your box is well, the size of the entire universe, which, by the way, is always expanding. And your textbook makes that one of the primary goals. Now, on page 27, it says in section 3, expand. And it tells you several ways, all of which we would like you to make priorities in this class. For example, number one, forums. Professional sites like LinkedIn have forums or groups organized by subject matter. Other social networking sites like Facebook have pages devoted to particular subjects. Look through the directory of these groups or forums. Choose one or two that are related to your industry or interests. And after signing up, speak up regularly whenever you have something to say that will quietly demonstrate you are an expert in your chosen subject area. Otherwise, keep quiet. Don't speak up about just anything. You want to be seen as a specialist, knowledgeable and focused. You want to get noticed by employers when they're searching for expert talent in your field or specialty. So participate in forums and groups on LinkedIn and especially our Mercy College Career and Life Planning Facebook group. You'll find the URL here in the uh, discussion section. Two, start a blog. Blog, they say, is short for weblog, which most people now don't remember. If you don't already have one, start one. It doesn't matter what your expertise is. If it's related to the job you're looking for, do a blog and update it regularly. And if you don't know how to blog, there are helpful sites such as blogger.com that give you detailed instructions. Incidentally, there are reportedly over 152 million blogs on the internet, so figure out how to make yours stand out. And if you already have a blog, then start a new blog. Oh, sorry, if you already have a blog but it roams all over the countryside in terms of subject matter, 
then start a new blog that's more narrowly preoccupied with your particular area of expertise. Post helpful articles there focused on action steps, not just thoughts. Let's say that you're an expert plumber. You can post entries on your blog that deal with such problems as how to fix that leaky toilet, etc. Generally speaking, employers are looking for blogs that deal with concrete action rather than lofty philosophical thought. Although, if you were applying to a job for me, I'd appreciate a blog that had lofty philosophical thought. So know your audience. Unless, of course, they say they represent a think tank. So yes, then philosophical thought is quite appropriate. We encourage you to actually do most of your work in our course in one of our active social media platforms and do it publicly and then share the work, usually just a link to the URL of your blog or website, in Blackboard to get your points. Three, Twitter. Some experts claim that blogs are so yesterday. Communication, they say, is moving toward brief and briefer. Texting has become hugely, hugely popular, and so has Twitter. 23% of U.S. adults use Twitter. Twitter's advantage is that it has hashtags, and Google is indexing all those tags and tweets. Savvy employers know how to do Twitter searches on Google, or on Twitter itself for that matter. All you have to figure out is which hashtags employers are likely to look for when they want to find someone with your expertise and experience. So, start tweeting. Don't let the president be the only person affecting change in perception through Twitter. Take him on and let us and potential employers or colleagues know what you think. Number four, videos. Presentation, the book says, is moving strongly these days toward the visual, like this. People like to see you, not just read you. Expensive equipment not required. The flip video camcorder used to be the most popular and inexpensive way to record yourself. <laughs> I remember those. But that's ancient history. It was displaced, as you might guess, by smartphones. Yep. You know it. There's your video camera right there, all in one. Which usually can do video, and sometimes rather surprisingly good video. They talk about the iPhone 6 by way of example, but my inexpensive uh, Moto Android phone does a great job, too. As for where to post your video, once you've shot and edited it, the champion, of course, is YouTube. One billion users, four billion views per day. But there are other choices. See PCGD Digital Marketing's list found at httptinyurl.com slash 80WTLBO. Don't worry about it. It's in the book, and you can get those references right there. So, make videos, like this one. Consider everything you write for this class to be a potential script for a video that you will post on YouTube or some other platform, Vimeo or any other public platform. Videos that will inevitably be part of your digital portfolio and online resume. Now, we're so convinced that these four suggestions from your textbook are valuable colors for your parachute that will help you in the career market that we've built these activities into our course as the primary ways to get your points and earn credits to buy your grade. We will be modeling for you all these things throughout the course and helping you get used to this brave new world. So, so don't be shy or, or have any fear. Just take the leap and know that you have a parachute and we got your back, regardless of what color your parachute is. Finally, remember this. A lesson my father taught me when I was in high school thinking of what college to go to. I told him, Dad, what I really want to do is just help people, as I know many of you at Mercy do. I want to help end poverty, help save the world, help preserve our environments and save plants and animals and habitats from extinction, heal people, make people healthy, create a healthy planet where we can all live happily ever after. What career would allow me to do that? And my dad, who had known Walt Disney and worked for The Happiest Place on Earth, said, Son, always remember the Disney Imagineers used to say that the best jobs for them hadn't been invented yet. Disney created the term Imagineers, and now there's a career called Imagineering. Each generation, we humans, create things that never existed before. Why don't you just use your imagination, my dad said, and go ahead and invent the career for you. 
though it took some time and a lot of trial and error, that's precisely what I've done, as I am now working in a field, sustainable development, that didn't exist when I was in high school in the mid-1980s. I had a dream of a career where I could spend my days and nights traveling around the world helping people, in my case through the magic of environmental sustainability and justice education and hands-on training of a technology called biodigestion and solar energy that most people didn't know anything about when I was in college or even graduate school. We actually can create our own reality. And that's what I welcome you to do too. The future is yours. Ready? Set?